Oil prices jumped more than 4% on Friday. The surge came after the US and Britain struck Houthi military targets in Yemen. That was in response to attacks by the Iran-backed group on shipping in the Red Sea. The strikes added to market concerns about the potential impact of a broader conflict in the Middle East. There are worries about oil supplies from the region, especially those moving through the critical Strait of Hormuz. The US and British strikes demonstrate a widening of the Israel-Hamas war since it erupted in October. Witnesses in Yemen confirmed explosions throughout the country. US President Joe Biden said the targeted strikes were a clear message the US and partners would not tolerate attacks on its personnel or allow hostile actors to imperil freedom of navigation. A Houthi spokesperson said the group would continue to target shipping heading towards Israel. The attacks have disrupted international commerce on the key passage between Europe and Asia. The route makes up about 15% of the world's shipping traffic. The Houthis have attacked commercial vessels in the Red Sea to show support for Palestinian militant group Hamas in its fight against Israel. Shipping giant Maersk and others have diverted vessels away from the Red Sea and warned of further disruptions. We cannot say that uh, last night's developments were unexpected. They, they, they have been in the making. Um, the only thing that, that has not been is the timing of it. Now, uh, we have the answer to that. It happened last night. Why did it happen? It happened because of the continuous attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea area, which disrupted international trade, it is worth recalling that uh, global trade volume, because of the attacks in the Red Sea, uh, fell more than 1%. Actually, I think it was 1.3% in December. I, I think that, that shipping companies uh, will, will not rush uh, back to the uh, Red Sea. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the news just came out that four tankers decided to avoid the area because of the uh, uh, of the uh, strikes from the US and the UK last night. And it is also a reasonable assumption that just because of the strikes on the Houthis in Yemen, uh, the atrocities in the Red Sea will not stop. Actually, they will intensify, in, our, in my opinion, the question is that if the con if the conflict will be well as protracted as as one expects it to be, whether oil supply uh, will uh, will be affected or not, uh, it is quite an important question because the the reason why the market has not had not rallied previously uh, meaningfully was that th there is a healthy supply cushion that might make up any shortfall. In case of a dis disruption, uh, we would put that supply cushion around uh, 5 million barrels per day, but it is only available in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia, in, in the Emirates, et cetera, et cetera. So if they are drawn into this conflict, then that spare capacity won't be available, unlikely to be available, and uh, that would have a devastating uh, impact on the supply demand balance and therefore on, on prices. If the situation escalates uh, on Saturday and Sunday, uh, we will not be surprised to see the market going even higher. But if the dust settles and, uh, and there is no further escalation, and by further escalation, I mean there, is, there are no additional strikes from the UK and the US on, on, on the rebels who are based in Yemen, or there is no, again, actual supply disruption, then anyone who went home uh, thinking that the situation might escalate over the weekend might just conclude that it will, it is time to take profit and maybe the market will come lower. Uh, uncertainty, uncertainty is the key word here. Uh, it, it is just simply impossible to come up with a reliable and well-founded predictions because days just do not exist in such a geopolitical climate.
Uh, we, we participate in, um, uh, in this coalition because we feel very strongly about the freedom of navigation. And we're very worried about the Houthi attacks uh, in the Red Sea. Uh, we've seen an escalation since uh, mid-November. Uh, the international community has warned the Houthis to stop these, uh, these attacks uh, against uh, vessels, uh, marine vessels, uh, commercial vessels. Um, uh, we have agreed to support politically uh, and militarily uh, the, uh, the strikes that the Americans and the Brits have done tonight. Uh, our contribution is one staff officer, uh, part of the planning and coordination unit. Maar toen heb ik heel veel bezig met die techbedrijven en met de start-ups in, in, in Amsterdam. Dus ja, daar ging ik uh, op, uh, op Den Haag weer. Dus, uh, dat is helder, maar je bent toch een beetje de last of the Mohicans. Uh... Well, of course, I mean, this is a, a, an action. Uh, these strikes are meant to de-escalate the situation. The actual escalation is done by, by the Houthi attacks uh, on the vessels. Uh, actual commercial trade has more or less stopped uh, in, in the region. Uh, so it's, uh, it's supposed to, to de-escalate. It's too early to assess uh, effects. Uh, we will have uh, to wait and see, but the strikes were very targeted uh, towards uh, the well, whatever the Houthis used to launch their missiles and, and drones, uh, and we'll have to assess the effects. As soon as the uh, the attacks on Israel and then the subsequent attacks in Gaza took place. Uh, there was escalation across the region uh, in Iraq and in Syria. There were attacks on American bases and retaliation against that, increased fire across the Israeli-Lebanese border. Uh, and now, of course, uh, the Houthi attacks on, on shipping, which have now been going on for some time. So escalation is already happening. The question is how far it goes. And uh, in relation to, to the situation in the Red Sea, in relation to Yemen, a lot depends on what the Houthi response now will be. I think it's very difficult for leaders in this sort of situation not to respond at all, given the loss of face that uh, involves. But I think there will be a question, we will be looking with great interest to see what the scale of the Houthi response is. And uh, Houthis, on, on the one hand, they are getting a lot of street credibility, a lot of support within Yemen, as well as in the wider Arab world for, as they see it, standing up against Israel and its supporters in the West. On the other hand, the primary uh, Houthi interest is maintaining and consolidating its position within Yemen. And the scale of these strikes is such uh, that is, I think, more than many analysts anticipated. And it looks to me as if it's it's yes targeted against the Houthi ability to uh, to hit uh, uh, targets in the Red Sea, but it's potentially a little bit broader than that. And the Houthis must be worried about the situation in which their capability for holding off their opponents within Yemen is is put at risk. After all, before this all kicked off, the Houthis were on the verge of a historic deal. Uh, with Saudi Arabia, which would have strengthened the Houthis' position within Yemen. You know, we have this sort of situation in a number of places in the region right now. We have it between uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon uh, and the Israeli Defense Force. We have something similar happening in Iraq and Syria, where you can have a situation of tit for tat going on for some significant period of time, where in each case the size of the response from, from the Western coalition to a Houthi a further Houthi strike will depend on on how substantial that strike is. So I would be surprised if there wasn't some Houthi retaliation. But the question is, is what the scale is. Uh, one of the things that triggered, I think, this latest uh, Amer well, this American and British strike was the fact that the Houthis appeared to be targeting warships, which was a significant escalation 